once said, I have never seriously planned anything. Most things happen to me by chance and happenstance. She has truly evolved into an iconic brand of corporate India. Ma'am, we are absolutely privileged to have you amongst us and request you to deliver the inaugural address. Can we have a huge round of applause for her? rather creative presentation. I think I'm going to borrow that PowerPoint <laughs> for and just simply send it, um, you know, every time people say, can we have a short bio, please? <laughs> so, um, first of all, thank you very, very much. Bala and the entire faculty and to all the students of this institute, it's great to be back here after about four or five years. I was here, I think, four years ago, um, you know, for, for a similar event. You know, all of you look great. The campus looks great. Bala Uncle, as always, is full of beans and new ideas. So I think that is one of the big strengths of uh, this great institute, which he has founded nurtured, created, and people like all of you, I'm sure will, through your words, deeds, and actions, perpetuate. I, I couldn't help thinking when I was sitting there that, um, you know, you have an event
instructions to follow and nothing much is going to change i truly believe that it is not about being a man or a woman it is about being a good leader a good human being someone who has compassion someone who believes in what he or she is doing and i don't think good leaders are differentiated by their gender good leaders are differentiated by their qualities by their humanity by the hard work they bring uh, by how much they collaborate with everybody else and i think good leaders are gender agnostic um, and i think the sooner especially in management schools we begin to recognize that the better it will be for all of us now i am certainly not saying that we are living in a world which is equal um, there is a lot of inequality but gender is only one source of inequality look at what happened to one of our campuses a few days ago where a bright phd student who happened to be a dalit was forced to commit suicide are we going to accept this world as our world or are we going to say we are going to be part of that change i think if we accept this world is our world and i am not willing to be part of the change then nothing is going to change for us and we will continue to be this great unrealized potential if on the other hand we believe as people as leaders as that where there is inequality we will in a responsible manner fight for that equality i think that is what will differentiate us and i think those are the qualities that differentiate leaders that differentiate people who pursue excellence with those who are happy with mediocrity and it's not about um you know living in the past it is about envisioning the future we want to create and then working hard towards creating that future Professor Bala, I have a suggestion for you. You called this event swim when you didn't have a lake. Now that you have a lake, I'm going to give you another acronym. You call this event climb, which is create. inspirational leadership in management and business
this climb. So I think so the next time I come, now that we have a lake, we should see a mountain. And knowing Professor Bala, he's probably going to figure out mountain as well because that is what distinguishes him. It's fantastic to talk to him every time because you know one of the things that I think successful people uh, do is they learn from everywhere. And, you know, to me, every time I interact with the Professor Bala, Uncle Bala, he's known by so many wonderful names, is the sheer curiosity of a child, the enthusiasm, uh, you know, which is quite irrepressible and the ability to not say no and the will to actually make it happen. I actually think if all of us thought about some of those qualities of leadership, we would actually be quite successful in whatever we chose to pursue. You know, the other thought I had was we are, you know, we, we obsess a lot about the corporate world. But you know, actually, the corporate world is a very small part of the world we live in. I have spent a lot of time, which is why I, I gave up what I keep saying. I gave up one full-time role to be able to, to pursue full-time many things that I wanted to do. And one of the reasons that, you know, I chose to give up an operational role is because really in an operational role, it just sucks up a lot of your time. And certainly, talking for myself, given that there is only one life we remember or one life that we can experience, I was very clear that I did not want to spend the next 20 years of my life doing what I had done in the last 20 years. Now, now this is a choice that each of us has to make individually. And I'm getting to the topic of, you know, nurturing a personal brand. I don't think creating a personal brand is about, you know, writing a marketing plan for yourself, though these days there are lots of coaches, etc., who would say, do you have an idea where you want to be in five years? Do you have an idea where you want to be in ten years? Frankly, if you have an idea of what you want to be, it doesn't matter whether it is two years or five years or ten years. I think we spend a lot of time 
time talking about successful leaders i think we have to spend an equal amount of time talking about successful people um you know do you want to be the most successful leader and be the most awful person i would say no unless it has the capacity to inspire and to motivate is of no use if we are defining leadership by a title by how much money you are earning by what your net worth is by what car you are driving then frankly even though it might seem very enticing it is actually quite shallow you have to define and i am not here sermonizing to any of you if you believe success for you is making a lot of money then go ahead and make a lot of money it will also make you very happy um if you believe that leadership for you is you know founding and creating the best academic institution then go ahead and do it in other words what i am really trying to say is that each one of us has to define for ourselves what is truly meaningful to you and not be swayed by you know lists that every business newspaper certainly publishes you know the top 20 in this list and the top 40 in that list and so on and frankly apart from yourself nobody else remembers which list you are on and you know do you want to again do you want to be part of a list or, or do you want to be remembered for what you do? you know one of the one of the examples that, that keeps coming back to me every time i talk about leadership is i believe the greatest leader that you know the modern world can you know remembers and truly admires and appreciates is none other than our own uh, mahatma gandhi so he was one leader who never got the economic economic times award he didn't even get a padma shri he got no padma bharat ratna Neither in his lifetime nor posthumously was he given any award, and yet look at the influence and the respect he commands across the world. I lived in South Africa, which is. where a lot of his ideas that he brought back to india were formed you should speak to randomly anybody in south africa and see for yourself what respect they hold gandhi ji in i also was lucky enough to live in atlanta which was the birthplace of mahatma 
Martin Luther King, uh, which actually in the middle of Atlanta has a statue of uh, Gandhi Ji. And you hear the blacks talk about the influence uh, certainly that Gandhi Ji had on them. Why am I sharing this example with you? For me personally, it may or may not work for you. For me personally, what I take out of that is leadership is about authenticity. Leadership is about walking the talk. Leadership is about being genuine. Leadership is about not faking something. Leadership is about not compromising your values. Leadership is about the pursuit of excellence in whatever you do. Now, you could be a political leader, you could be a leader of, uh, you know, civil rights, you could be a leader of an NGO, you could be the Reserve Bank governor, you could be the Prime Minister of a country or whatever. But if you were to distill the core essence of what distinguishes great leaders from people who have leadership as a title, so we are not talking about leadership as a title or as a role. We are talking about leadership as a behavior. I can have any title in the world and I could still be very mediocre in what I do. So each one of you, each one of us has to decide what kind of leader do we want to be? Do we want to be the kind of leader that operates with authenticity and genuineness? And then your brand will get created. I don't think Gandhiji sat and thought about, you know, the brand I want to create for myself standing for ahimsa, standing for the truth, standing for non-violence, standing for all of those things. He simply did what he believed was right. He simply followed a set of values that were dear to him that were important to him and that he made no bones about communicating. That is the true essence of leadership. It is about being yourself. It is not about pretense. It is not about hypocrisy. It is not about chasing some material comfort and so on and so forth. Of course, you have to be very good in whatever you choose to do. Of course, you must be the kind of leader that inspires people well enough for people to stop and listen to you. Of course, you must be a leader that is a great role model. But you don't start off by saying that this is what I want to be. Actually, you do start 
start off by saying this is what I want to be in terms of values, not in terms of, you know, the kind of positioning we think about for brands. Because if you are genuine, then your behavior is genuine. And everything that you do perpetuates that position. You know, those of you who are in marketing or all of us in business have heard this, you know, this thing being said, position yourself or somebody else will. The fact is that yourself. Brands that have positioned themselves and have been around for hundreds of years, have been around for hundreds of years because they operate with authenticity. Those could be people brands, those could be product brands, those could be uh, service brands, those could be anything. So you have to begin by saying what kind of person you want to be and everything else falls in place. The reason why it is so easy then is that you know your behavior follows your belief, your conviction, your deep desire. As you know, there is a quote, and I'm sure uh, uh, Professor Bala will know the original Sanskrit version of it. As the Upanishad say. You know, as is your deep desire, so is your thought. As is your thought, so is your deed. As is your deed, so is your, uh, you know, uh, whatever reward. Uh, so it all stems from a deep desire of what you want to be. The other quality that I do want to emphasize is that one of the things that distinguishes leaders in every field, you look at sports people, you look at
um, you know, you could be gifted, but a gift alone is not enough to get you to be the best in whatever profession you choose to be. So there is desire, there is dedication, there is passion, there is commitment, there is hugely hard work. Part of the reason why we see a lot of mediocrity is because people are simply bored in terms of what they are doing. You know, people say, okay, I have to do this because I have a job. You know, at least it pays my EMI and, you know, my family is taken care of. If that's what, if that's the rut you're in, my sincere suggestion to all of you would be get out of it. Unless you're enjoying what you're doing, you will never be able to create excellence. Unless you find meaning in what you do, you will never be able to be the best. So don't worry about how you you are being perceived. If you spend your time thinking about truly who are you, how do you want to be remembered, what are the things that are important to you, what are the things that you value, your behavior will be consistent with with that. So I would not start the question by saying, you know, what is my brand? I would start with the question which says, you know, who am I and what do I want to do? What makes sense for me? You know, what creates enjoyment for me. Um, you know, what is a joyful experience for me? Because if, if you could find those joyful experiences, trust me, you will be the best in whatever you choose to be. So it is about having a great sense of ownership. It is about having a great sense of honesty, at least with yourself. It is about having a great sense of, you know, what makes you different, better, and special. And it is about acting in consonance with your belief as well as your conviction. And I think if you do that, you will all end up creating wonderful brands for yourself. You will all end up creating, you know, a joyful experience for yourself. And I can tell you that there is nothing more rewarding than doing what you truly want to do and doing it with your full heart, your full competency, and you know, bringing your soul to it. And don't worry about what is your gender, where you come from, and so on and so forth. 
those things are frankly immaterial and the less we talk about them the better it will be thank you the society compels a woman to uh, be a housewife, be a mother and be a, all the other things. So how do you fought out of it and uh, like design, design your own design? some 
a program with Cadbury's and going to Nigeria was the last part of my leadership, leadership development. Um, and I was to come back as CEO of Cadbury in India. That would have been in 1992. I instead chose to go to Cadbury South Africa, uh, which was much bigger than Cadbury India, but I was not CEO. I was the director of marketing in sales for Cadbury South Africa and the only reason I did that was because it would give me an exposure, experience and an adventure that, you know, India would not have. So I made that unconventional choice. Um, you know, I made another unconventional choice when I, with the Coca-Cola company, decided to go and be division president in Latin America, which was unheard of, again, very macho, very male, you know, no woman ever there, etc., Etc. So every time I went there and was at a social event, people would ask me who I worked for, and they would give the name of the most senior person in Coke, and I said I used to take great pleasure in saying, you know, actually he works for me. So, you know, those are some of the cheap um, You know, again, I decided to, um, I decided to walk away from a full-time role uh, from a one full-time role to full-time many roles, uh, primarily because I got very exposed to the whole uh, domain of uh, nutrition, development, uh, sector, and, um, you know, have spent more and more time doing that, and that is what I want to do, as I said. So you have to decide. I mean, you know, the choices I have made worked for me. They may or may not work for you. So don't go by what someone else has done. You have to go by what you feel is right for you. Because you can't guess, second guess anybody else. And you know what gives me joy may or may not give you joy. So if you enjoy teaching, then, you know, become an academic. If you enjoy sports, then go into sports management. But you know, don't get stuck in a rut. Okay, we have time, I guess, for...
so intelligent. Yes, but oh, you know, nobody gives you a job because they like your face. And you know, frankly, let people say what they want to say. It doesn't really matter. Um, you know, because if we start, if we start living our life by what somebody else is saying, it's an impossible task. I'm telling you, the sure way to be unhappy is to live your life by someone else's expectations. So you've got to live your life
you know, I'm a woman, I'm a Dalit, I'm a, you know, a tribal and so on and so forth. I think humanity, humanity demands from all of us that we don't accept the things that are not fair and equitable. That is what education is about. It's not about answering an exam. 